Before air travel, the departure of a great liner was considered news, and Cunard's Lusitania was the greatest, the fastest, the most luxurious liner afloat on May 1st, 1915, as she prepared to leave New York City for Liverpool. It was news that the glamorous and rich Alfred Gwynne Vanderbilt was aboard, a member of the Just Missed It Club, people who had booked on the Titanic but canceled at the last minute. And it was news that in the morning papers that day, Germany, at war with Great Britain, published a warning that vessels flying the British flag or the flag of any of her allies were subject to attack as they passed through the waters off the British Isles. Even though it made no mention of the Lusitania, it was widely interpreted to be aimed at the ship. In fact, Eric Larson is the author of the New York Times bestseller, Dead Wake, about the Lusitania. The prevailing view was that the Lusitania was too big, too fast to ever be caught by a German submarine. And also there was this other idea that no German commander would try to sink it in the first place because it was a passenger line. But on May 7th at 2.10 p.m., in sight of the Irish coast, the Lusitania was struck by a German torpedo. Moments later, there was a second explosion. She sank in just 18 minutes. 1,198 of the nearly 2,000 people on the ship died, more than 120 of them Americans. Yeah, you can see, yeah, there she is rising in again. Look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we've just come up over the wreck, and we're about to cross down to the other side now. The wreck is still down there, in 300 feet of water. Boat captain Carol O'Donoghue feels its presence. Oh, you said you'd remember the, um, the tragedy of it all, really. Perfectly clear day, just like today. You see nothing, just water. All I could see was heads bobbing up and down. For a 1994 documentary, National Geographic interviewed survivors of the Lusitania. And it was like a half a circle of people moaning in the water. It was just a moan, a constant moan, and it gradually got less and less. Owen McGarry has dived the wreck nearly 50 times. When you're out here, do you have feelings for what's, what happened and what's down there? When I look up at the surface, I can see bodies raining down. You can see what it was like. You can hear the screams. The torpedo hit just behind the bridge on the starboard side. The ship tilted so far, so fast, only six lifeboats successfully made it into the water. Naval vessels in the area were ordered not to go near the site for fear they would be torpedoed too. So small boats made their way from Queenstown, now called Cove, 31 miles away. Some rescuers had to row the entire distance. My grandfather raced down to the office, was immediately involved in the rescue operation, uh, getting anybody who had a boat to go out, Courtney Murphy's grandfather, Jerome Murphy, the Cunard Line manager in Queenstown, took charge. He had to organize to commandeer rooms in the hotels where the people, the survivors, could be put up. In this family photo, the small boy in the front row is Courtney Murphy's father, who watched as the rescue boats returned. The bodies, as they came in in the boats, would have been in whatever clothes they had on them, and then they were covered in shrouds or in sheets. So your father the, remembered seeing He remembered bodies. seeing lines of bodies being laid out here along the, the, uh, along the footpath, and uh, that has an indelible memory for him. There were 764 survivors. Among the dead, Alfred Gwynne Vanderbilt. Today in Cove, there is a monument along the route the funeral procession took to the town cemetery, where the Lusitania dead were buried in mass graves. Mourners, as far as the eye could see, paying their respects. The pictures then and now, an eerie matchup. 
Was the sinking of the Lusitania just bad luck or something more sinister? Her captain, William Thomas Turner, believed she would have a British naval escort into port. None appeared. The British Navy didn't tell Captain Turner that U-20, the submarine that sunk her, was out there, something it knew because Germany's code books had been captured and then decoded at a top secret facility called Room 40. One explanation is that Room 40 was absolutely top secret and by God they were going to keep it that way. But another explanation is that it would not hurt the British effort if the Lusitania were were sunk and Americans were killed because it might draw America into the war. Winston Churchill oversaw Room 40. Head of the British Navy then, he was on record hoping for an incident that would drag the United States into the war. There's no smoking memo, if you will, that, that says that Churchill or the Admiralty deliberately put the Lusitania in harm's way. There is, however, a body of evidence that if you look at it, it is really damning. No one has ever been able to inspect the underside of the wreck, where the answer to the question what caused the second explosion may lie. These two items were recovered in 2011. This the Irish government has only allowed diver Owen McGarry to bring up artifacts that were lying on the sea floor or were in the bridge area. This is a multi-beam image of the wreck. It's a sonar beam that's sent from a ship that bounces off the sea floor. If you could imagine the whole ship is lying on our side. The starboard side is underneath all that. And sadly, because she's lying on the torpedo wound, we can't see exactly, you know, this is where all the carnage happened, where the torpedo strike and the second explosion. McGarry, for one, doesn't believe the accepted conclusion that the second explosion was caused by the rupture of the ship's main steam line. She was carrying small arms munitions. But were there other explosives aboard? I still think that there was, and she was carrying contraband. Um, something substantially caused that second explosion. And I do believe that there is somebody out there who does know. Or not, the Lusitania remains fodder for conspiracy theorists. It's the maritime grassy knoll. There are so many miraculous or nearly so things that happen that you know, it leaves room for people to say, well, well that, that can't be it. I mean, here's the ship that sank in 18 minutes. It's just not possible, right? 100 years later, as time takes its toll, the truth only becomes more elusive. <laughs>